Welcome to the new normal. By burning high carbon fossil fuels and by clearing vast areas of forested land for agriculture, agribusiness, and industry, we have dramatically increased the amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. Temperatures are rising. Severe storms and droughts are increasing. Glaciers are melting. Plants and animals are being forced from their habitats. People, too, are being displaced. We call it the climate crisis, and we understand its primary cause. While the 99% of humanity that is most vulnerable strive to adapt, a core of global institutions is actively pursuing false solutions. Why do we call them false solutions? Because rather than getting at the fundamentals of a broken system that has devastated the global ecosystem, policies like carbon trading, offsets, and payment for environmental services focus on maintaining continued economic growth. One such policy is called RED, for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. Tropical forests naturally capture and store carbon dioxide, but due to industrial development, agriculture and other demands, an area of forest larger than the nation of England is destroyed every year. Forests are worth more to industry when they are felled for timber, for plantations, for all the demands of industrial civilization. But what if forests were given more economic value if they were left intact? RED claims to do just that, to pay developing countries to keep their forests standing. The United Nations and other global agencies are aggressively pursuing RED as a climate solution. But RED appears to be more about making money than about protecting forests or saving the climate. We should have the developed world allocate significant funds in this direction because it is to the benefit of their future economies as well as to the benefit of the local communities and economies of the developing world. In fact, studies have been done which estimate that the value of ecosystem goods and services from the 100,000 odd protected areas on Earth are something of the order of four and a half to five trillion dollars per annum. That's four and a half to five million million dollars per annum. That's a huge amount of the economy. REDS is a, a program that's supposed to create this gigantic market for carbon sequestration in trees. Well, who owns the trees? What are they buying when they buy the carbon in the trees? What are, they, are they going to restrict indigenous lifeways? Are they going to restrict subsistence? And it turns out that yes, that's part of the plan. It's going to hand over forest communities and forests to the highest bidder. It means the community forest, forest people can no longer utilize the forest the way they know best to. They can't live off the forest, they can't farm in the forest, they can't hunt in the forest, they can't get their medicines from the forest, they'll be completely cut off. The carbon market, in, in, its, in its essence, in its nutshell, is a system designed to allow industries in the north that pollute to continue polluting by either trading their emissions with someone else who's reduced theirs or theoretically reduced theirs, or in the case of tree plantations or forests, um, say that the tr this carbon being stored in those trees can be used to offset uh, pollution in the north. Red policies are moving forward quickly. At the United Nations Climate Summit in Cancun, Mexico in 2010, RED had come to dominate the negotiations. The multilateral development banks and the world's major financial institutions are already investing millions to pave the way for RED. It's absolutely clear that RED Plus enjoys very broad support all around the world. And it's pretty easy to see why. It offers some very significant opportunities to achieve multiple goals. The RED Plus 
is one of the best chances we have, maybe one of the last chances we have to really save our rich biological diversity. So we really need this Cancun COP meeting to adopt a decision on Red Plus. And I think if there's any lesson coming out of Copenhagen, we don't have time to wait. And if there's any issue that's right for moving forward, it's Red Plus. While corporate elites push red inside the Cancun Climate Summit, thousands of people excluded from the official venue marched in the streets outside. We're here today marching with thousands of people in the streets of Cancun, answering the call out from La Via Campesina, the biggest social movement on the planet. We're here today to call out nation states of the world and their failure to act in the global climate crisis. And in particular, we're here to call out the World Bank and their co-optation of the United Nations Climate Change Convention you know, through the World Bank Reds program. We're here with a direct message to World Bank to say that as indigenous peoples, we do not want our forests to be traded in the International Forest Carbon Facility. We don't want forest removals from our homelands. We know how to take care of our lands. We don't need the World Bank getting involved in that. So we're here to say to the United Nations, to the world, and to the thousands of people that are taking actions all across the planet on today's La Via Capitina call out, that as indigenous peoples, we want rights and we don't want rights. Amidst the urgency of the climate crisis, the United Nations, the World Bank, and other global bodies are overriding popular sentiment to push through red as part of what they call the new green economy. In the wake of the global economic crisis, greenhouse gas emissions reached record levels in 2010. More than 80% of these emissions come from burning fossil fuels, and only around 17% come from deforestation. So why is the discussion about forests? Porque los gobiernos y las empresas del norte necesitan por ley reducir el CO2. Entonces dicen, en lugar de reducir, lo voy a voy a comprar la respiración, la capacidad que tienen los árboles de respirar. Se pone entonces como un negocio el pensar que eh, yo no voy a reducir, tú tienes que ser mi sumidero. Entonces eh, los países del sur se convierten en los responsables de absorber el CO2 que el norte está emitiendo. El pago por ciencias ambientales es un programa terrible, creo que es un fraude para la opinión pública, es un fraude para la humanidad. Hay seis tipos de gases de efecto invernadero, además de gases venenosos y los árboles solo son capaces de transformar y capturar el, el dióxido de carbono, el CO2. Todos los demás gases no solo no los captura, sino los matan. It is time to end carbon offsetting and carbon speculations as solutions to climate change. We have to see trees for what they are and not pretend that they are nothing more than carbon stocks. I think one of the things that we have accomplished internationally is a declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples that requires states to ask before they take. And that has to be the new relationship between indigenous peoples and the state. Because until they have to ask, it's the same old colonialism that Columbus brought over and whenever. already seeing the land grabs. There are many, many situations of indigenous lands that are, there is no clear title. And so those lands are being rapidly gobbled up already and red threatens to speed up that process even more. While red is being negotiated at the United Nations climate forums, State governments around the world have begun forging their own red agreements. In late 2010, the governor of California signed an agreement with the governors of Acre, Brazil, and Chiapas, Mexico, to combat climate change and protect tropical forests. How? By linking industries in California with forest protection schemes in Acre and Chiapas through carbon trading. Instead of requiring our California companies to do all their reductions in California, it may be more cost-effective for them to 
um, by offsets. And that's where the developing countries come in. That's another way for California and other large economies to help the developing world by making those investments mm. through the market. Chiapas, on the border with Guatemala, is the Mexican state with the highest number and greatest diversity of indigenous peoples in Mexico. Chiapas also has the deepest poverty and the most forest cover. The government of Chiapas has a long history of conflict with indigenous communities. Now the governor plans to put the entire surface of the state into the carbon market. The Latendon jungle is one of the largest remaining areas of rainforest north of the Amazon. But only about 10% of the Lacandon jungle remains intact. Over the course of many years, numerous communities have settled in areas of the Lacandon that are now designated as natural protected areas, such as the Montes Azules Biosphere Reserve. Now, these communities are under threat as the government seeks to displace these so-called illegal settlers in order to accommodate red. Nuestros abuelos han sufrido de varios años desde ellos que no quisieron estaban en una finca, pero ya no aguantaron la explotación, la esclavitud que estaban viviendo ahí. Entonces tuvieron que decidir para para buscar un lugar. Entonces de que llegaron en esta comunidad Tuvieron que enfrentar muchos, muchos este, enfermedades, mucha injusticia del gobierno. Y este, hasta ahorita lo estamos viviendo. El gobierno no, no nos han apoyado tan siquiera. Nos han tratado de que no somos, de que no somos este, como seres humanos o de que no somos parte de México. El gobierno no nos no nos da lo que en realidad lo necesita la gente, sino que nada más nos da proyectos que, que no dan vida, no que dan muerte. Son proyectos que, que nos dan a cultivar este, cuestiones de palma aceite, de todo ese, de otros, de reforestar y de, de sembrar otros árboles que no son conocidos de nosotros. Y eso no lo servimos, no lo necesitamos. Chiapas is positioning itself as a global leader in the production of agrofuels. Like in many places, agrofuel plantations and other forest monocultures are promoted hand in glove with red. Como hay que reforestar, pues de pasada hacemos negocio con esa reforestación. Entonces vamos a plantear que los que las plantaciones de monocultivo forestales es igual a selva o a bosque. Entonces dicen, bueno, yo puedo tumbar la selva del Amazonas, la selva de lo que sea y sembrar puro pino, y absorbe lo mismo de CO2. Entonces, al mismo tiempo absorbe y vendo la capacidad del pino de absorber la tonelada, y al mismo tiempo vendo madera. O siembro eucalipto, y al mismo tiempo vendo para papel, que tanto se desperdicia en el norte. O siembro palma africana, y al mismo tiempo vendo la respiración de la palma africana, y al mismo tiempo vendo palma de aceite. Él lo ve como un negocio, nuestra madre tierra, pues nosotros eso no se debe de decir, pues es como, es nuestra madre, no se puede vender. Y es más, este, está viendo sobre, como está metiendo los, el proyecto de, del red, o el, ajá, que viene siendo como el capturo de carbono, pues eso es negocio de ellos, nosotros no nos conviene, nosotros lo usamos para autoconsumo. According to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, any project that affects indigenous peoples can only go ahead under conditions of free, prior, and informed consent. Yet the displacements of indigenous communities occurring right now in the region of Amador Hernández, with the goal of fencing off the Lacandon jungle for carbon sequestration, are in clear violation of the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Lo que dice el gobierno es que nosotros somos destructores, pero eso no es cierto. Tenemos varias varias áreas que tenemos reservados que, que ahí nadie puede nadie puede entrar y nadie puede tocar. 
nos han culpado siempre destructor, nos han buscado la forma de cómo mal hablar de nosotros. Que ahorita ya no solo el gobierno lo está pensando lo que es gobierno mexicano, sino son planes internacionales. Y por eso nosotros, nuestros abuelos han luchado varios años y siempre han resistido y han vivido acá. Como siempre lo decíamos, nuestros abuelos andan, lo, lo decían siempre que, que no hay otra cosa que nuestra casa es la tierra. Y sin la casa también no podemos vivir. The state of Acre, Brazil, in the western Amazon, was once one of the most forested places on Earth. But the forests have been logged for precious hardwoods and to make way for vast cattle pasture to produce beef for the world market. Since 2006, Acre has had a state law implementing a program of payments for environmental services, and it is moving quickly to prepare the ground for red. But not everyone in Acre is at peace with these plans. A natureza tem uma função né, de fazer toda essa parte. E nós temos a função de proteger isso. Nós estamos recebendo na nossa região mais um mecanismo, que é o RED. É, é mais uma engrenagem de mercado dos meios naturais. característica fundamental do RED, ele tem que viabilizar... Em novembro de 2011, pessoas de toda a região Amazon e de outros países se juntaram em Acre to discuss their concerns about RED. They found that there are similar concerns everywhere. O RED, para a gente, não está sendo discutido né, com o movimento indígena. Ela não está sendo informado lá na aldeia né, do que, que é o RED. Agora, a destruição da floresta, a exploração dos povos que nela vivem, está um pouco mais sofisticada. Depois de legitimar e iniciar esse monumental saque da, da madeira, dessas florestas e, e de espoliação da população, agora vem uma outra forma ainda mais perversa, que é através dos mecanismos de rede, que é para a comercialização do ar que se respira. Então é a mercantilização da natureza e de eliminação de qualquer possibilidade dos povos que aqui vivem, nessas florestas, terem um mínimo de autonomia para exercer o controle de seus territórios e para viver como gostariam de viver. Praticamente 90% são afetados, são mulheres e crianças indígenas nesses impacto ambiental, com os grandes empreendimentos, com estrada, com hidrelétrica, com, com vários outros empreendimentos que tenha é, causado né, próximo do, da nossa terra ou dentro da nossa terra. E elas são as, as pessoas que não participam da, dos encontros, das oficinas, dos seminários que se trata a questão ambiental. É um projeto que vem lá de cima para baixo. A gente não é, é reconhecido por preservar a natureza, preservar a floresta, preservar a terra. Então, os povos indígenas, antes de surgir o RED, RED+, mais e outros, RED, já fazemos o RED indígena, que é preservar a natureza. A questão da economia verde, nós vimos que a economia verde, ela não, ela não serve para os povos indígenas. Quem foi entrar no RED hoje está aceitando a proposta da privatização dos meios naturais, está aceitando o mecanismo de mercadização da água, sabe, da floresta, é, da madeira, está aceitando a proposta da, do mercado dos meios naturais.
California is one of the richest places in the world. And at the same time, communities that live near sources of pollution are overburdened by those costs. Those costs come out in their health, in their enjoyment of the places where they live, work, play, and pray. Yeah, I was born and raised here uh, in the North Richmond area, so I have experienced uh, uh, a whole lifetime of negative uh, impacts from the uh, Chevron refinery here. Uh, waking up in the morning and finding leaves on the uh, trees and flowers in the yard, uh, burn crisp overnight from chemical exposure. From an environmental justice community perspective, we want polluting companies like Chevron here and others in our community to uh, try not to produce the pollution in the first place and reduce it. Incinerators, refineries, coal power plants that spew climate pollution should not be able to protect a forest and say that their job is done. You know, they need to reduce their pollution, they need to pay the historic debt for all the externalized costs, the public health impacts, the ecosystem loss, the loss of clean air, the loss of clean water, the loss of livelihoods to all the communities that are most impacted. Carbon offsets recreates the injustices that happen on a local level for communities that are overburdened by pollution and puts those and externalizes those costs to communities that are similarly vulnerable outside of California. In reality, it's a lot like trying to lose weight by paying someone else to go on a diet. And the idea is you give somebody else a bunch of money to lose weight and you add your two weights together, divide by half, your average weight goes down if they lose enough weight. And in the case of some of the particular offsets, in particular the, um, the um, reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degrega degradation proposals, it's a lot more like starving somebody someplace else um, as a way of, of losing weight. While red is being rolled out all over the world, indigenous peoples and other forest-dependent people everywhere are speaking out against it. Developed countries does not want to take responsibility to reduce carbon from GHG. We indigenous people will be mostly uh, we are affected negatively, very adversely by the red mechanism. Red is a market-based mechanism. It talks about market. It talks about uh, a very different way of life about solving the climate crisis. It, has, um, it doesn't uh, provide space for uh, indigenous peoples to meaningfully take part in solving the climate crisis. Supuestamente red is para una uno de los metodologías para mitigar los impactos del cambio climático. Pero esta vez, a costilla de los pueblos indígenas piensan hacer eh, el bien supuestamente de la humanidad. My people, the Kuna people, have probably 90% of the forest. In my understanding about the red, they cannot be part of the red program because they maintain the forest, they don't degrade the forest, they don't deforestate the forest. But what happened, you are creating perverse incentives when you are saying we're gonna pay to the people who deforestate or degrade. Then my people may say, okay, I want some cash here. I'm gonna deforestate my land. We cannot play with the rights of indigenous people like this. Our rights, our ways, our knowledge are ignored by the government, then what should we do? Ensure the full and effective of participation in the indigenous people. We must also to expect the, uh, what's the meaning of uh, this red, what's the effect to our community and to our co-indigenous people. Not only are forests being looked at as carbon sinks, but also as the renewable alternative to fossil fuels. Throughout the Global South, plans are underway to develop huge industrial tree plantations and to commercialize genetically engineered trees to produce biomass energy, industrial scale biochar, and feedstocks for synthetic biology. This is all being promoted as the new green economy. 
Everywhere, these schemes are leading to land grabs, false promises, corruption, and conflict. And in many cases, they lead to more greenhouse gas emissions, not less. If you're talking about Kalangala, you have seen oil palm and has gutted all the place and as far as we can see, all the natural forest has been replaced. Mavira, the government is proposing to give it away. In the background, what you see here, the whole place has been degraded. You can see it is replaced with pine. So unless something is done to do with maybe replanting with natural species, I don't see the future of red in Uganda. Entonces lo están promoviendo de que solamente el monocultivo es la solución para evitar o para mitigar los impactos del cambio climático. Entonces si el día en que nosotros eliminamos todo tipo de bosque eh, primarios en ese sentido, se acaba la diversidad biológica, se acaba el conocimiento tradicional, ya no vamos a utilizar la medicina indígena, o sea, entonces nos van a obligar realmente ¿verdad? a migrar a las ciudades, a las grandes ciudades. No modifica la emisión, no genera desarrollo en las comunidades, genera más bien concentración de las tierras, exclusión y también eh, expulsión de tierras campesinas indígenas en la medida que va, se va a convertir en un negocio eh, y oculta el verdadero problema en la verdadera raíz, que... Los países del norte, Europa, Estados Unidos, Japón, etc., emiten el 66% del CO2 y mientras no lo disminuyan, cualquier otro intento de disminuir eh, será realmente una, una trampa. Boleh, hutan daerah sini dijadikan istilahnya hutan lindung atau apa ya, yang jelas untuk penghijauan dan segala macam, atau udara supaya istilahnya paru-paru dunia atau segala macam, itu silakan, boleh. Cuman saya harap istilahnya untuk di luar negeri pembuatan mesin dan lain sebagainya itu justru istilahnya merusak, menyemar, menyemarkan udara. Itu kami harap ya harus di stop. Jangan istilahnya dilanjutkan. Jangan kita yang dijadikan korban sementara dia cuman mau ambil untungnya. We, the indigenous peoples of the world, defend our land, life and resources. Our forest is our soul, our land is our life, our river is our blood, our mountain is our God. We are strong and proud, son and daughters of the soil. We, the indigenous peoples of the world, assert our right to self-determination. We don't ask for more and we don't want less.